He was seen as can't miss, one of the best arms in the game with Hall of Fame potential. When things went sideways for Rick Ankeel, many observers just called it the thing, a mental block, but it was so much more. I'd have a nightmare about the ball wouldn't come out of my hand or people are laughing at me. I'm telling myself this is effing crazy, you know, but you're, those thoughts are still happening because you just want to be who you were. Going to the ballpark with that, the pressure of that, I was completely lost. Potential for Rick Ankiel. When you look back at pitchers who've pitched that well, that young, they have extraordinary careers, if not Hall of Fame type careers. I just was pitcher of the month. I was pitching the best I had ever pitched. I felt like this was my coming out party. I threw one pitch that just didn't quite sit right. It just kind of took me aback where I felt like, man, I just threw a wild pitch on national TV. I go to throw a fastball and I throw it off the backstop, calls a change up, I throw that off the backstop. Felt like the ball just wasn't coming out of my hands. All the things that had always helped me get back on track throughout the season uh, just wasn't working. I had, and, and I really, I had no idea what was happening. First thing I thought was he had a blister and he was trying to pitch through it. He just couldn't feel the baseball. I just didn't understand that that was gonna be really the last game that I ever walked out onto the mound being the most confident person in the world on a pitching mound. There were times where I would, I was standing on the mound and I could actually hear the blood inside like start to it felt like it was draining from behind my ears and down and once that would happen um, if you know my initial language was here we go again it was almost as if everything would be fine through my mechanics and then right when I get to the release point I would have a miniature seizure it was like I'd black out and then you'd almost and it almost felt like I would look and you know where'd the ball go when that happens the body releases adrenaline and stress hormones like cortisol and they start to escalate. And you can get into this huge crisis where the hormone goes through your body, it gets your heart beating fast, your breath going quickly, you start getting tingly, sweaty, you hyperventilate, your stomach has butterflies. Uh, that panic, once the adrenaline, like your car alarm, just goes off and it's setting off all the alert signs. We all deal with pressure. It's a normal part of life, pressure at work, pressure at home. Uh, it can really wear you down, so you really have to figure out how are you gonna cope with that. My whole life had to change. I needed to do it for me. Baseball just wasn't gonna be a part of me anymore and that was a really tough decision to come to. I felt like this giant weight come off and I felt like for the first time in five years that I took the deepest breath that I'd taken in a long time. This inner peace wave came over me and it was, you know, it was just a beautiful moment. Scott Boris calls and says, hey, uh, what do you think about being an outfielder? So I find a bat, I'm standing in my living room, nobody's there. I'm taking practice swings by myself and I, I just, I get to a point where I'm like, I'm visualizing, I see myself making it back to the big leagues and I let myself feel what it would be to hit a home run in the big leagues and I visualize the crowd going crazy and this feeling came over me where I felt like this is, this is right, this is it. Van Keel out to deep right field. Gets gone! First game back in the major leagues. Remarkable. When he hit that home run, it brought me to tears, I must say. And he didn't have to deal with the pressure of trying to gain that feel for the ball. And ironically, from the outfield, he was tremendously accurate and had an amazingly strong arm. I was having fun with it. There was nothing, you know, I didn't have that stress or anxiety about I need to throw a strike. 
Stress is a normal part of life. The trick is not letting it overwhelm you. And how are you going to build some mental health strategies just to be able to tolerate that day to day? One of the things that has really helped me is routine, setting goals, and not just long-term goals, but daily goals. It's really important that you chunk it down into manageable actions. It doesn't feel like a huge a task, a, a tedious job. The, the easier, the simpler, the better. I jig it real slow in case there's some fish cruising along the wall. So that works for me. Something that gives me motivation to get to that point of the day. I'm not gonna win every day, but if I can win more days than not, well then I have something to build on, right? That positive reinforcement. It is a lot of pressure. I definitely had to have a switch in mentality of no more, no more blowing up, no more letting the sport get the best of me. The Canadian market is uh, pretty small, obviously, uh, compared to down south. So had to had to make some make some noise somehow, and that was going to be on the offensive side of the ball, hitting it far and hitting it hard. So that's that's how we started off. I definitely was a bit of a hot head. I tried to stay to myself, but I would blow up. I did break my hand in the minor leagues, punching a wall, being fed up with striking out or doing some dumb stuff. Um, but those things only happen once in your life and they're okay one time, as long as they don't happen again. It happened when I had to cut out my temper and that happened to me during the lockdown. Tyler was in Florida by himself the whole time. I think it was really challenging at times when you're by yourself, the most interaction you have is through a video game that you're playing or talking to me once a day. There's so much in the world, especially these days, out of our control that we can't do anything about. So only focusing on them and getting worried about that, it's not gonna get you anywhere. But there are some things that you can adapt to and evolve with and figure out what to do with that is under your control. I was able to meditate daily I, was, I would sit there for hours just thinking, just being off in my own world, and, and it, it was great. I feel like I've, I've changed a lot, and I've changed for the better. There's this famous psychologist that wrote about the idea of a state of flow, uh, and they talk about it in sport, or whenever you're really relaxed into something, so everything disappears around you. So they talk about that in sports and high performance, but in your relaxation, you can find that same flow, that place where you just relax into it, you forget about everything else and you feel really good. And you gotta find what that flow place is for yourself. Home run, Tyler O'Neill in his first bet of 2020. I absolutely think the freedom of body and mind go in sync. One has to lead the other, and if you're free of those stresses in your mind, your body is going to follow suit. It was a great year for Tyler winning the gold glove and he was able to make those adjustments because of everything he was doing off the field. Since I've been home in the, this off season, I've been able to, you know, write my own stuff, not necessarily for composing sake, but for my own and just kind of express my energy in a, in a different platform on a piano rather than through conversation and it's really just a different form of uh, an energy outlet for me. I feel great. I feel, I feel like sometimes my mind's buzzing and I'm seeing keys that I haven't seen before and then I'm hitting chords that I shouldn't be landing and I'm like, wow, this is, this is really cool. You can use it as an expression of an emotion. So you can pound on it when you're angry, you can play softly when you're uh, uh, in a romantic sp uh, spot, you can, you can use it to express. It takes you to another place in your brain. It's moving from those, the, the neural pathways to another neural pathway, so it's giving you a, a, a break and it may give you an understanding that this is the place that you would prefer to be and what would it take to stay there for longer periods of time even when you're not playing the piano. Having hobbies so important because it, it just spreads out the parts of yourself that's your identity in your life. So it's not all wrapped up in your work or just your relationship. You kind of got it distributed. So when any one time something's not going well, you always can go back to your hobby and that can give you some pleasure and relaxation. 
This oat mix is really good. What did you put in it? He has made so many steps in the right direction, and he has matured so much as an individual. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to see his accomplishments because he puts in such hard work. And I am just incredibly proud of him. Everything that's important to me is, is I feel like, is, is more of a topic of conversation rather than confrontation. I feel like I matured. I feel like I grew up.